Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us at the Foothills Online. Let's get ready to worship.
after day, day after day, night after night, I will remember you're with me in this fight. All the love battle, it rages on. The war is already won, and I know. Children weep no more Hope is on the horizon Weary world behold Your promised Messiah Angels let your song begin
Let God arise, 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 let God arise. When God rises up in our life, man, he sets us free. Amen. So thank you, church, for joining us. We will see you next week. Hey, everybody. As always, it is so good to have you with us. We hope that you're doing well. Can you believe it's December? Oh, my gosh. It's crazy. But here we are. Merry Christmas. Looking forward to all the fun and festivities that the month brings. We also want to thank you for continuing to give and your support, but more than that, continuing to be faithful in your walk with the Lord and in giving and doing the things that He asks us to do. So don't forget, you can give on the app, you can give through the website, you can mail in a check, you can drop it off right here in person. So um, again, we know that God will bless you for your continued faithfulness. So tonight, December 5th is the big night for the ladies, our Christmas dinner. And I uh, just wanted to remind you that there's no child care. And if for some sad reason you are not able to come, we have a waiting list. So let us know. You can call the church office and we will hopefully fill that spot. And now here are the announcements and Josiah Ortega is reading scripture. So lift up your voice and sing out his praise. It's Christmas, born is the king rejoice in the day. Remember. Honor. Teach. Join us on Saturday, December 18th for National Wreaths Across America Day. Jason, 
How do you know my name? My business know everyone named in your grandfather's will. I know what he left me. Nothing. Walk away and you'll never know, will you? So what's in the box? Your inheritance. I want to give you a series of gifts. If you fail in any way, you get nothing. My grandfather may have left me something. If you do succeed, you'll be one step closer to all I have for you. Hey, Thrive Youth, we're here to remind you that we have an event on December 15th. We're going to be doing a sock exchange and a gift exchange. So come bring fun socks and a small gift. And we're going to have pizza, a movie, and games. Let's have some fun. Hi, church. Today I'm going to read you verse Job 16, 2 through 6. I have heard many things like these, miserable comforters, you are you all. Will your long-winded speeches never end? What ails you that you keep on arguing? I also could speak like you if I, if I were in your place. I could make fine speeches against you and shake my head at you. But my mouth would encourage you. Comfort from my lips would would bring you relief. Yet if I speak, my pain is not relieved, and if I refrain, it does not go away. Job 16, 2 through 6. Thank you. That was awesome, Josiah. Thank you so much. And now, here's Pastor Mark. Well, hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. Can you believe it's December already? My goodness, uh, just a few weeks, and we'll be celebrating Christmas, and then we'll have uh, a new year, and January marks the 2022. Unbelievable how time is flying. And as we get older, it seems to fly faster. So right now for me, it's ripping. But anyway, uh, it's good to have you. And uh, we're so glad you're, you're a part of us and part of the church and, and staying a part uh, in your faith with the Lord. I want to talk to you today about another question. I get a lot of questions about this. And the question is basically, why is there so much suffering in the world? Why is there so much pain? It's a good question. I don't think Adam and Eve had any idea what the results and the consequences of their sin in the Garden of Eden when they violated God's word, they disobeyed God, and they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I don't think they had any idea what would come from that because what came from that was pain. In fact, when God confronted them in Genesis chapter 3, he said, look, basically... Life's going to be tough from here on out. Because you have disobeyed me, you have introduced sin into the world. And with sin came pain. Prior to their sin, I don't think they had any, any uh, pain at all. Uh, there was no death. They were living forever, basically. Um, and so this sin brought pain. Uh, for Adam, it would bring pain in labor. Uh, working the soil was going to be tough and going to be painful. For woman, childbirth. And so right there, pain introduced and pain has been with us ever since. And the, uh, I'm sure that Eve, when she was giving birth to Cain, thought, man, did we mess up in the garden. <laughs> and so pain has been with us ever since. And we've, we've all struggled with it. And, but before we get into the rest of the message, that's just kind of the introduction. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for life and that you have given us an answer. Even though life is painful, you've given us an answer and, and a hope. The answer is Jesus, that no matter what we're going through, if we have you, Jesus, in our life, we can, we can overcome it, we can get through it. And then we have the hope of heaven where there is no more tears, where there is no more sorrow, where there is no more pain. And I just thank you, Lord God, for giving us an answer for the problems that we have caused by our own life and by the sin of others. And so, Jesus, we honor you today. We bless you and we thank you for your word. And I pray that you would anoint this word and that you would remove all the distractions so that we could zero in and really hear what you have to say to us today, Lord. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. So why pain? Well, 
Uh, we're going to look at Job, and and, and we're going to be we're going to be uh, you know I've read I've read the book of Job so many times. I've preached on the book of Job a number of times, and there's just so many there's so many wonderful nuggets in the book of Job, things that help us live our life and understand life. And Job 14 verse one, Job says, "Man born of woman is of few days and full of trouble." Isn't that the truth? Uh, nothing truer could be said. And Job of all people. He understood pain. In one day, if you're not familiar with the story, if you've never read the book, read the book of Job. It's a great, great book to read. But um, in one day, Job lost everything. And then a bit later, Job lost his health and, 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 and had uh, incredible health struggles. And so uh, he understood pain. And so everyone, everyone in the world, everyone you know, everyone that's that's ever been born from 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 Cain through, you know, Adam and Eve and then Cain to now, everyone is suffering from something. Body aches. And I know the older you get, the more body aches you seem to have. And what's interesting, the less you do. Right. I mean, when I was younger, I played all kinds of sports. And so it was natural that I had body aches from that, you know, but I don't play many sports now. Still have body aches. In fact, I have more. I get body aches just from sleeping wrong. Wake up and have no idea what I did in the, in, in the middle of the night to cause this pain in my neck or in my shoulder or, or wherever. We have all kinds of body aches from injuries and illness, right? And then there's headaches. Now, I'm not talking about physical headaches. I'm just talking about the things that go on in our head that cause aches and pain in our life, like fears and doubt and the pain of regret that, that sometimes this videotape is, is, is being, uh, you know, rewind is being, uh, is being hit and the rewind button and we're, we're, we're reliving events that were very painful, things that we did or things that happened to us. These are all headaches, things that go on in our head. And we have heartaches. And, and, and heartaches and headaches can be some of the worst. I mean, body aches are no fun, but, but the, the pain of regret, the pain of fear and, and what fear causes and the pain of doubt. And then the pain that we have from family and friends, loved ones that, that have hurt us or, or, you know, just the struggles that we have with people. And then probably the most serious pain. And one that Adam and Eve experienced more than anyone else, I think, on earth. Because of their, the nature of their relationship with God in the Garden of Eden, where they walked and they talked with God every day, after they sinned, that changed. Their relationship with God took a dramatic turn. It had to. God could not walk with them the same way that he had before because they violated his, his covenant and he could not be in the presence of sin. Though he still was with them, he still spoke with them, he still spoke, but he wasn't, I don't think they had the same physical relationship that they had in the garden. And so they understood the ache that's in our soul that's, that, that's caused from sin and, and just the emptiness that we feel, the, the loneliness we feel, the separation from God, right? That's really the loneliness that people feel. You're not, you're not typically lonely because there's not people in your life. A lot of loneliness that people experience is that separation from God. Well, that can be, that can be fixed by, by confessing our sins and inviting Jesus into our life and, 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 and asking him to forgive us. And then that relationship with Jesus can be renewed. And then the futility of life. You read the, the book of Ecclesiastes. Solomon just had the pain of futility. Here's a man who had everything. Wealth, riches, wisdom. I mean, God gave him everything. Because he asked for wisdom. God said, I'm not only going to give you wisdom, I'm going to give you everything that you could ever want. And so here's a man who had everything in life. And yet, the book of Ecclesiastes is fill, filled with futility. Because the soul wasn't full. Because of his relationship with God at that time. So the question then is, why? Why do we need all this pain? Why do we need the body aches? Couldn't we do without them? God, couldn't we do without them? And then the, the, the pains in our, in, you know, in our mind and the pains from our friends and family and the heartache from relationships. Can't we do it out without all of these? And then the soul aches, of course. And then what's the point of them? If, if we have them, 
And this is, you know, this is where some, some new Christians, baby Christians struggle, is they give their heart to Christ and all their pains aren't alleviated. <laughs> they still have pain. Now, the soul pain, when someone gives their heart to Christ, that can be, that can be taken care of. But they may still have struggles in their, in their, you know, in their life and in their family. And, in, you know, they think, well, why, why do I need the pain now that I've given my heart to Jesus, right? What's the point of it? Well, there's a couple of things. We're going to learn from Job. First, Job chapter 42, verse 5 and 6, which is at the very end of the book, last chapter of the Bible, of, of the book of Job. Uh, and, and we see with Job, it opened his eyes for change. It opened his eyes for change. And that's one of the point and one of the reasons why we have pain is to open our eyes for change. Here's what Job said. My, uh, my ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Things changed. But the pain is what led Job to the change, to, to opening his eyes to see the Lord. Therefore, because I now see you better, Lord, because I now see you in a different way as a result of the pain that I've endured, I despise myself and I repent in dust and ashes. So what, what the pain that Job went through led him to was a deeper place with God where, where he was begging the Lord for forgiveness and, and, and wanting to draw closer to the Lord in spite of himself. I despise myself, yet he's turning to the Lord. And so even though we don't like pain, it has value. And here's some of the values of pain, okay? First of all, it lowers our dumb rate. Pain lowers our dumb rate. It's the woe we need to avoid the woe. Now, if people listen to pain more, we would not have TV shows like Ridiculousness. If you've never seen Ridiculousness, Ridiculousness is a show that is basically America's Funniest Home Videos, but there's some tragedy involved where people just do dumb things and they hurt themselves bad. Like, Pain should tell you, don't get on a skateboard in shorts and no shirt and go down a hill. It's just not a good thing because more than likely at some point you're going to have to get off of that screaming um, skateboard and asphalt is awaiting your, your smooth skin. So pain, you know, before you jump, you know, the, the old thing, look before you leap. Well, before you jump off something, you should probably say, that, wait a minute, what's going to happen to me when I hit the ground? And so pain can, can lower our dumb rate to where we're not doing as many stupid things if we're listening to pain and the potential of it. And then it also deters bad behavior, a hot stove, right? You, you touch a hot stove, makes you, it, it changes your, 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 um, your proximity. You want to get away from it. And so, you, you know, the hot stove idea too is, my parents and I grew up in the day and age where I got spanked, where it was physical punishment when I did wrong. And so I would learn that not to do this action because my, my dad might take the belt to my behind or don't get caught. <laughs> right? <laughs> For me, it was more don't get caught. But it's the hot stove. It deters bad behavior. And then, and then it spurs us on to action. You may not want to get up and go to work tomorrow. It's Monday. You're watching this on Sunday, let's say. You may not want to get up and go to work on Monday. But the pain of not having a job spurs you to get up and be on time. You may not want to do something at school and, 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 and do your homework, but the pain of failing and having to go through that class again and then facing the embarrassment of failing spurs you on to do your homework. Or the pain of not getting to watch a certain television show or, or, or play on your computer because your parents will, not, will take it away from you if you don't do your homework. So pain spurs us on to action. So pain does have value. The other value of pain is it just reminds us we're not home yet. 
Sometimes you wake up with body aches and you're like, oh man, this hurts, that hurts. Just know this, you're not in heaven yet. God doesn't want us too comfortable here. He wants us to long for heaven. He wants us to hope for heaven. And so pain can just remind us that you, you, this isn't your home. Earth is not your final destination. It's just a place we're passing through. Now, pain is also good because without it, if you didn't have pain in your life, you would know what, what struggle is. And if you didn't know what struggle was, you'd never grow up. Pain helps us grow up. It helps mature us. See, otherwise, without pain, if, if a person never had pain, never struggled, never grow up, and they just become selfish, shallow pleasure, pleasure seekers, basically kind of useless. What, what value would a person be without pain? It's pain that opens it opens our eyes to ourself, to our, the way we're living, to what we're doing. And without it, you just go about your life. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we may die. It's just hedonism. Without pain, there's just hedonism just is rampant in your life. You just do whatever and you don't care. God doesn't want any of this for us. None, none of that. Now, there's another value to pain, an even deeper value to pain than, than just helping us grow up, not be so dumb, you know, not, not do wrong things, right? Pain is a, is a strong deterrent to wrong behavior. And there, there's an even deeper uh, message in pain. And this is, what, this is what we really see with Job. Uh, the best use of pain is it can cause us to grow spiritually. People that go through pain are more open for change. That's why it opens our eyes for change. Most people, adults now especially, rarely find Christ without crisis. If you're a quote unquote good person, so you have, you have really no understanding of right and wrong or sin. And if you do, it's just that, that you don't do that much of it. And so you're a good person and you have plenty of money. And you have a pretty good family, pretty good family life. You're pretty healthy and strong. And we talked about this over the last couple of weeks with the righteous or with the unrighteous, the wicked and how they prosper. Well, when people are prospering and money's flowing and they got everything they want and life's good, they don't need Jesus. What do you need Jesus for? You don't. But man, when you go through stuff, when you're going through hard times, when, when you've got real pain in your life, that's a crisis. It opens your eyes for change when you have the pain of loss. I've known many people that have come to Christ because they lost a loved one. I, I, we have people in our church that came to Christ because they came to this church for a funeral of a friend and ended up coming to church regularly and hearing the message of salvation and giving their life to Christ. The, 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 the pain of loss, any loss, but especially when you have a loved one or a friend that passed away, that pain can, can, can lead you to Christ. That crisis leads you to Christ. Divorce. We've had people that have started coming to our church because they went through a really difficult divorce. Bankruptcy. People that have lost everything financially and they're struggling and they're hurting or illness. All of these open us up and open our eyes to look and search for a better, more permanent solution to life than just having money or having relationships or having recreation or having all that we, we want. Right? It opens us up to a better, more permanent solution. Jesus. Jesus. When people are, are, are doing well, they don't really see the need to change their life. Why would you? Why, why would you want to change your life if everything's going well? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And so God allows pain and a crisis in the hopes that we would reach out for Christ and reach out to him. And this is what happened for Job. See, 
though he was a good man, and, and Job chapter 1, God, God is, is bragging on Job. So Job was a righteous man already. But his pain led him into an even deeper trust with God. And that's, if, if you're in pain today, and I'm sure you are because everyone is, of some sort, I would pray, my prayer would be that that pain that you're going through right now would lead you closer to Christ. That you would, that you would dig in deeper to know Him. In fact, you're sitting in your home or in your car or wherever you're watching this. Can we just bow our heads real quick? and Let's just pray. I just want to pray for you right now. Father, there are people, everyone, everyone right now who's watching this. As well as myself, the speaker. We're, we're all in pain of some sort. Some of us have really serious body aches. Headaches, things that we think about. Heartaches, things that we've, people that we've, we've lost or that we're in conflict with. And then soul aches, Lord, just being separated from you. Every one of us is dealing with something, Father. And I pray for every person that's in pain, not necessarily that their pain would go, though that would be wonderful, but first and foremost, that the pain that we're experiencing would, would lead us closer to you, Jesus. That's first and foremost. That, that the pain that we're feeling would, would cause us to, to confess you, to read your word, to search for a better solution to life, which is you, Jesus. That in our crisis, we would find you, Jesus Christ. And then also, Lord, now, secondary, the allevi that you would alleviate our pain, our struggle, whatever it would be. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And so, Job, back to the message. Good man, but it led him into an even deeper relationship, a deeper trust with God, and he became a better man. And that's, see, that's the hope and the goal of pain is that we become better. We become better people because we have pain. So it opens our eyes for change, and it can open up our hearts for compassion. And this is something that Job struggled with. Because, see, Job... He had, he had some friends that came to visit him when they found out all the tragedy that went on in his life, all the crisis that Job was in. Job had a few friends that came and they sat with him and they tried to minister to him. Okay, they did not. In fact, they made Job's pain even worse. And some of Job's friends, they said some horrible things to Job, like, all your kids that died that one day, they died because you're not a good man. How would you like to hear that? That somebody in your life died because you were a bad person, and that's what he was told. And all throughout the book of Job, his friends are, are arguing with him that, look, if you change your life, if you give your life to God, if you would be a good person, if you weren't so selfish, if you weren't so arrogant, your kids would be alive and your, your life would be good. But you're a bad person. That's why all these bad things are happening to you. Wow. Job said this, men at ease, no pain, life's good. Men at ease have contempt for misfortune as the fate of those whose feet are slipping. In other words, I think we, we, we pretty much understand this, that when life's going well, right, when everything's going well in your life, you got bills are paid, got plenty of money, good relationships, good health, you're a good person, right? You tend to care less for the pain of others. In fact, ooh, the pain of others is kind of an annoyance to you. I, I don't want to hear it. I just don't want to hear it. I'm good. I'm sorry you're going through a rough time, but I just don't, I don't want, I just don't want to be bothered with it. We care less. And this is what Job felt from his friends, quote unquote friends, because they weren't really good friends. Not the way they treated him. Man, if I had friends that treated me like Job's friends treated me, I wouldn't be friends with them. Pain has a capacity to help us feel empathy. And that's the good thing. That's the value of pain. And why it's prevalent 
and why, what the point of it is, is to help us feel empathy. But on the reverse side or the, the opposite of that is that it can also make us cranky at the very least. That when we're going through pain, we're agitated and irritated and, and, and cranky and not, not very nice to people. And then at worst, it can make us bitter. Remember Job, because of his pain, he became a better man. But I'm telling you, pain has turned a lot of people into bitter, resentful people. And that's a danger of pain. But that never happened to Job. He stayed true to God. And he stayed true to the truth, who God was. See, turning to Jesus with our pain, and that's, he's the solution. Jesus is the solution for pain. Now, just because you turn to Jesus and ask, for, ask him to, to, you know, you pray and ask him to heal you, he, you may not be healed right now. But you'll never be totally healed on earth. Even if God takes that pain away, you're still going to have other pain. Because pain is just a part of life. The alleviation of pain, the true healing of pain is not going to happen until we leave planet Earth and go to heaven. Prayerfully, you're going to heaven. You're not going to heaven because you're a good person. You're going to heaven because Jesus Christ saved you, because Jesus' blood washed you of your sins, and you've confessed him as your Lord and Savior. And so turning to Jesus with our pain turns us into compassionate people. The more you turn to Christ in your pain, the more you will see the pain of others and, and, and feel compassion and empathy for them. It changes our heart, which is what we need. Job's friends, listen, they were more concerned with why he had pain and how they could fix him. I know some pastors, I have, I've had friends that were pastors that got up and they'd, they'd tell their congregation all about their pains. And I, I know of a pastor that he, he, he tells, I mean, they know everything about him physically and all the struggle he has physically. And he's quite the sympathetic figure in his church. In fact, he's the most sympathetic figure in the church. And everyone in the church, their job is to make him feel better. <laughs> I don't want to talk about my pain with people. Because for me, I don't want you to take care of me. My job is to encourage you. Your job is not to encourage me. Now, I'm encouraged by people all the time, but... But the focus of the ministry is to help others. The sheep don't need to know if the shepherd has a hurt foot. They just need to be safe because of the shepherd. I mean, so talking about our pain with others just makes us sympathetic figures. We don't, we don't need that. We want to listen to your pain. We want to pray for you and your pain. The other reason I don't talk about my pain with our church is you always have those people in your church that when you tell them what's wrong with you, they, 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 they got to try and fix you. Or, you know, now I, I, I've had knee problems for years, right? And, and I had knee surgery. And I had a lady in our church. She doesn't go to our church anymore. So I won't tell you her name, but she came up to me after church, you know, and I'm in, I'm in this, you know, cane and all that from a knee surgery I'd had. And she goes, Pastor, I feel I have a word from the Lord for you. Okay, I'm, I'm interested. What, 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 is God, what does God want to say to me? And is he going to use this lady, right? And she says, God told me that you're to give up golf because of your knee. Wow, God never said that to me. And I didn't really want to hear it. Because golf really helps me with a lot of other pains up here, right? <laughs> and so you get that when you talk about your pain with others, they want to fix you. And they have a word from the Lord from you or some, some, not that this verse is a trite verse because it's a very powerful verse. But sometimes people come up to you and, and, you, and you're struggling, you're hurting. And they'll say, well, you know, brother. All things work together for good. Does that not love Jesus? And you just want to like, you shut up. 
I know that. I don't need to hear that right now, right? We don't need to fix people in their pain. And this is what Job's friends are trying to do. See, they cared more about why he had pain and fixing his pain than they did about him as a person and what he was struggling with. It's more important that we care about not why or how to fix, not some remedy that you heard. And listen, oh, by the way, by the way, by the way, women. Now, men, we can't do this, right? So I'm talking right now to women. If you see a pregnant woman, the last thing she needs to hear about is how difficult your labor was. She just doesn't need to hear it. She, what she needs to hear is, I got through it, you'll get through it. If I could get through it, anybody can get through it. Well, yeah, but didn't it hurt? Yeah, it was painful, but you'll get through it. And the joy of the baby far transcends any pain that you'll have in the delivery. That's what they need to hear, not, oh, my labor was so hard. Because then you just freak them out. And here's the other thing. Now, this is for all of us. If, if somebody has a pain, don't tell them how yours is worse. Don't tell them how you, you went through something worse than they did. Because that's not helpful. And this is what Job's friends were doing. They didn't care about what he was, what he was going through. And so their concern was arrogant. You read the book of Job, his friends were arrogant. Here's how. See, by trying to fix his pain, what they ended up doing was judging him. Well, you know, if you would do this, then you wouldn't have that. Oh, so you're the judge. So you know, in your great knowledge, what would work for them better than they know what would work for them. In, in her great knowledge, God said, stop golfing. Really? G golf is a great gift for me. We all need diversions in life. But you end up judging people when you try to fix them. And then here's the other thing. When you try to fix people, you don't really care about it. Why? Why do you have this pain? Why? It's almost like you read the book of Job. Job became this project for his friends. I'm not a project. When I'm in pain, I'm not your project to fix or to try and figure out why I have my pain. It's just, it's it, really what, you, what, what we need, any of us when we're in pain, because these are, none of these are comforting, right? None of these, trying to fix or trying to find out why. They're not comforting. People in pain, and you just need to know you're standing with them and that you love them. Now, if they ask you for advice, okay, that's different. If they ask you for some input, say, hey, I understand you went through labor and, and you know, you've had a number of kids. What, 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 what do I need to be alert for? What can I do to help maybe make the process or the, or, or, or the, you know, the delivery better? And then you can give them some input and give them some advice because they're seeking advice. But if they're not asking, just let them know you're standing with them and that you love them. Because here's, here's what Job, here's how Job ended up with his friends. He said this. Okay, he's saying, this is how you're treating me in my pain. But if you were in pain, here's what I would do. My mouth would encourage you. My mouth would encourage you. Comfort from my lips would bring you relief. See, that's the point. Pain opens our eyes for change. That's personal. For you to change your life. And then turning to others how to how to encourage them in their pain and bring comfort from your lips to them. That's the point. That's why we have pain. It makes us better people like it did Job. We bow your heads. Oh, Father, there's pain in our life. You're the answer. And whether, whether or not you take away all my pain, Lord, before I leave this earth, I, 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 don't, I don't think you will because I still need it. I don't want to be a selfish, shallow pleasure seeker who never grows up. I want to grow up. I want to be better. I want to be more mature. I want to be more caring for others. And so, Lord, use the pain. I pray that you would use the pains that I'm feeling to make me a better man, not just to alleviate. Because the alleviating of pain, the healing of pain is coming. I know that. That's all heaven. 
So right now on earth, use this pain that I have, God, to make me a better man. In fact, use, a, use all of us to be better people. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, God bless you and, and I pray you have a, not a pain-free day, but, but that you have a great day in Jesus' name. Thanks.